So I was using my nice Bosch microwave and I was heating up some food and then after I took it out and I went to close the door, I heard a zap and the power just completely shut off on the microwave. So at first I thought, dang, this sucks. Like this microwave is only maybe three years old at most. Like it's already breaking. What the heck? So I thought, you know, maybe I'll just sell it to a used place or something or for parts and buy a new one. Maybe that's just what we got to do. But I quickly found out after a quick Google, these microwaves for over the stove hood cost around $500. I was so taken back, I was expecting maybe 100 or 200 but hey, that is what it is. So that made me have a second thought, well, maybe I can try to fix this myself. I still wasn't ready to pay 100 bucks to have a repairman come out to fix it if it's something simple. I thought, you know, I'm kind of handy, maybe I can take a whack at it. So like anything else, I started by searching the internet for any information I could find on how to diagnose problems with your microwave. And I came across this YouTube channel called 12 Volt Vids. And you can tell this guy regularly repairs appliances and stuff like this. But he was gracious enough to make a video about a microwave repair where he shares some of the knowledge he has about what to look for for different issues with it. And I'll be sure to leave a link down below to that video if any of you guys want to check it out. So I've got the microwave power plug unplugged and what you're going to want to do is if you have a multimeter like this, you can hook it up to the plug to go ahead and do a few tests. So I've got the wires hooked up to the two power prongs there as you can see. And so on your multimeter now if everything's good to go with the door closed, you would want to see about half a million ohms of resistance here, which is what I have now. This is actually after I fixed mine. But if let's say your fuse had blown inside the microwave, then you would see no continuity. Or in my multimeter it shows up as 0L. So there's no connection there. But now what can happen is if the internal fuse in the microwave didn't blow, but you have a bad switch that detects when the door handle's closed, which was the case for mine, you would see zero resistance, or very close to it, which is bad. That would be telling you you got a short in your system, basically. So now you might be thinking, well, that's all fine and dandy, but what if I don't have a multimeter to test this stuff? Can I still figure out the issue with my microwave? And the answer is yes, you can. Probably. If it is a bad switch like it was in my case, you will be able to figure out that on your own, even without the multimeter. You just won't be able to know for sure until you start taking some of the parts off. So now let's just jump right into removing the microwave. So to start with, there's some bolts at the front of the top of it you've got to unscrew to start letting it down. Now when you do this, you'll notice the back of the microwave stays up because it's hinged to the wall. And you'll notice that I used a cardboard box on top of my stove, and this was to break the fall of the microwave just in case I accidentally dropped it. It might be a good idea to have an extra set of hands around for doing that part, since it is pretty heavy. Now before we start disassembling the microwave, I want to stop for a moment to tell you something important, and that is that there's some parts of the microwave that are actually dangerous. Now this doesn't mean you can't do it on your own, but you just need to be aware of what could potentially harm you. And the main concern here is the capacitor. Now if you know what an AED is, or a defibrillator, this capacitor holds up this charge that's about the same as what a defibrillator has to instantly release it at around a few thousand volts which can possibly kill you so that's why you need to be careful with it now the good news is microwave manufacturers don't want to kill people so in more recent years they've started including what's called a bleed resistor on the capacitor now what this does is whenever you don't have your microwave powered on or plugged in this 
will slowly let the charge out of your capacitor so that it doesn't have thousands of volts charged up ready to uh, electrocute you. But now, with that said, you have been warned. Proceed at your own risk. But now let's go ahead and get into taking apart the microwave. After you get the microwave down from over the stove, you want to set it down on somewhere where it's easy to work with. Like I've got here. And uh, if you're wondering what parts are going to come apart, the first thing you're going to need to do is remove this cover that goes on the fan on top. And it's just held in with two screws. So after you get that top cover removed, the next piece is gonna be the top uh, and the sides. It's all one piece together. There's a few screws on top you gotta get out and a few screws on the sides you gotta get out. And then it should be able to pop out forwards so now at this point you can see some of the electrical components and you might be wondering what in the world am I looking at if you've never seen the inside of a microwave before but to make sure your capacitor is already discharged you can take some pliers to connect the two terminals together to discharge it. And when you do that, you want to make sure you're touching the insulated part of the pliers. And you probably also want to wear gloves that will help insulate your hands from it as well, just in case. Now mine is already discharged, so there's no uh, danger here. I know I'm safe. And you can always double check by sticking it in there, making sure you've got metal to metal contact down in those two uh, terminals of the capacitor. And so after you do that, you're good to go. Nothing else in here is going to harm you. So now one thing you're gonna wanna check is the fuse. And on mine, the fuse is right here. But you should be able to check the resistance on the fuse with your multimeter. And you're going to want to get a very low resistance. If you have something in the millions of ohms, then you know your fuse is blown. But you can also usually just see it by looking at it. This is what a blown fuse looks like. You can kind of see it's discolored, blackened. This is what a good fuse looks like. And I'll leave a link below. You can buy new fuses pretty cheap on Amazon. So if your fuse is blown, you go ahead and order a new fuse and you put it in that might not fix your problem the fuse is there to blow to help you identify that something else has a problem the fuse just snaps into position there nothing fancy so what's likely going on here is that when you open the microwave it's the sensor in the door is what the issue is for me. So to get to the door sensor, you're going to want to open the microwave door. And we're going to need to take off the uh, front interface panel from the uh, microwave. Now this panel is just held on with one screw up top here. And to remove this, you're going to want to push up and then swing out, just like that. Now when you're doing yours, all of these wires are gonna be connected to it. I already disconnected mine because I already took mine apart. So just be aware of that. So now once you're back here, where your switches are that detect when the doors open and close, there's one up top here, or two down here at the bottom on my microwave. Now each of these switches has a slightly different purpose, and I'm not gonna go into that, but they all need to work, basically. Now to get those out, there's two screws that hold this plate into place. This piece that the switches mount to. 
which also you just push up and then it can come out. And it's kind of hard to maneuver it through the wires. So you just got to wiggle it around a bit. There we go. So then you have access to all three of these switches here. And you want to test each one with your multimeter. So each one of the switches has two terminals on it. One of your connectors to each terminal. So right now we're reading infinity ohms. It says M ohms there, which stands for millions of ohms. So now if I push the button in on the switch, we'll see it reads zero ohms, meaning it has a connection going through it. So that switch is working good. Now let's look at the others. So I've got this uh, gray one hooked up. So now if I push the button, so this one's at infinity ohms and I push it, it goes down to zero ohms. Okay, so that's good. Let me hook up this last one. And this one is at zero ohms. And when I push the button, it's still at zero ohms. So there's no change on this one, so I know this switch is bad. But there's one other way you can test this without even needing the multimeter. So when I was pushing the button on these, for example this one, you notice it makes a clicking sound. And you can feel it, how it clicks all the way down into position, then back up. When we look at the one that's bad, there's no click. And you can feel it's different. The switch has failed mechanically inside. The pieces aren't springing back out like they're supposed to. So it's a mechanical failure. So you can even detect that even if you don't have a multimeter, you can figure out that this is the problem if the button is not springing back out like it should. So now to fix a broken switch like this, you're not going to be able to repair the switch itself. You're going to need to order a new one, but luckily these parts are pretty general and mass produced. So you can get them pretty cheap on Amazon. So I actually got a two pack here. And the interesting thing about this is there's actually two different kinds of switches you can buy. There's ones that are usually open, normally open when the switch is like this, or normally closed when the switch is like this. And then vice versa for when the button's pressed. You can actually tell on the switch itself, it'll say NC for normally closed or NO for normally open. And those lines correlate to where the terminal comes out of the switch. And that's always the same position for those. So what that means is, if you aren't sure which kind it is, you'll always be able to tell, I have the two different kinds right here, the one on the right is a normally open and the one on the left is a normally closed and you can tell because the terminals don't line up so when you have the connectors that go on this from the microwave they'll only line up one way so that's how you know which kind needs to go there and in my case the one we're replacing is a normally closed one So all we have to do is just put the new one in and then put the microwave back together. And it snaps into place. It's as easy as that. So now getting this back into place, just make sure it hooks back in like that. And then put the two screws back. Alright, 
so we got it screwed back in. So now we can put the electrical connectors back on. All right, after that, we can go ahead and get the control panel hooked back up. put back the small screw that goes on top for it make sure you got a snug fit now before you get it all put back together you might want to go ahead and check the power plug again measuring the resistance so now that we've checked that we'll go ahead and finish putting the cover on Okay, so now before I go through all the work of getting this back up over the stove, I'm going to test it here on the table while it's still out, just in case something is still wrong with it. And I'm actually using a power strip here that I'm going to plug in with it in the off position. That way, just in case, if while I was plugging the plug in, it wouldn't accidentally arc if it did have a short in it and did try to power immediately. So let me plug that in. And now, this way, I won't ruin my plugs or shock myself, potentially. I can just flip the switch on the power switch. And let's see what happens. Oh my god. Timer light, or the clock comes on, so that's a good sign. Nothing shorting out yet. Door opens. Lights on. Everything seems normal. Let's just do a quick little test. All right, so it runs. No issues there. Open the door, close the door. Everything seems fine. I think we're good to go. So now I'll go ahead and shut this off and uh, go ahead and finish putting the rest of the screws in this bad boy and then get it back up onto the stove. can be pretty heavy so it helps to have two people to get it back up in there but obviously you can still do it with just one person as you're about to see so at this point I did want to say thank you for watching if you still are after nearly 20 minutes of video I do apologize I know it has run long but if you are somebody who found this video because you are having problems with your microwave and you're just looking for a way to fix it and you found this video helpful, be sure to drop me a comment below. And if you could possibly hit the like button, that helps the YouTube algorithm know that you want other people to see this video as well. But with that said, I again want to say thank you for watching and... I will see you next time. Bye, Jay!